Okay. You say that you don't see it, you don't know it, but it happens. Let's say it's a fairly serious case. You don't let them go back and play, but you start a treatment. Uh, it's not going to be surgery, but are they going to just merely maybe go through rehab? What are, what are they going to do to, to kind of come out of a pretty bad concussion? Well, I'll start by saying every concussion is different, and every athlete is different. So you treat each concussion and each athlete um, as their own case. Most concussions uh, resolve in the high school population less than three weeks. But this is different than what we've been told in the past is that it's seven days, maybe ten days, and then they're back and then they're back. Now only about twenty percent to twenty five percent of concussions resolve in a week. Another twenty percent resolve take more than three weeks to resolve. Are they resolving themselves, the concussions? Do they do it themselves, or is it outside treatment that's making it? Well, there's not necessarily a lot of medication that helps. There's not really a lot of rehab that helps. There are some outside things that do help, but most of it is the brain healing itself. The main thing that helps um, get a concussion to go away or resolve is rest. And that means getting adequate sleep, sometimes more sleep than you, usually more sleep than usual. Um, not participating in any sports or any physical activity that increases the blood pressure and increases uh, the heart rate that would send more blood to the brain, a brain that really can't handle it, that is working at a much slower pace. It also usually means to uh, adjust what they're doing at school. As you can imagine, we use our brains to do everything, to read, to watch TV, to take tests. Well, your brain's not working as well when you have a concussion. It's much more slowed down. It's much harder to process information that normally would be easy to process. So going to school actually makes it worse. Doing the normal things that kids like to do make it worse. Playing video games makes it worse. So we have to put um, limits on what they can do and what they can't do. And we have to educate the schools and the parents so that they can protect them and allow them to get back as quickly as possible. So it's rest, both mental rest and physical rest until their symptoms resolve and then you slowly let them go back to school, you let them start taking tests, and then you let them start uh, exercising, a gradual step-by-step -step exercise program. And generally speaking, unless it's just a very severe case, it will heal and they will be normal again. Yes. Uh, fortunately, the human brain and young brains are very resilient. Uh, most of them, probably about 90 Eight, 95 to 98 percent of them resolve completely. There are a very small, small percentage that do, do, not, do not ever resolve. It's about two percent that take longer than six months to resolve from a single concussion. So it does happen, unfortunately, and it can be devastating to the parents and the athlete uh, that they will still have symptoms even that long after their first concussion. But fortunately, most of the time, <laughs> Uh, they will resolve on their own. Just have to give them the amount of time and the support to do that. We're talking, of course, with Dr. Chad Wagner in sports medicine at Harbin Clinic about the situation involving concussions. And I don't think we should end our conversation, doctor, without some mention of one of Rome's most famous historical situations. You know of it, and I know of it, and we've discussed it. And that's uh, our very, very own young man who went off in the 1890s to play football at the University of Georgia. And in a very ill-fated early game with almost no protection of any kind, playing the University of Virginia at Piedmont Park in Atlanta, he suffered a concussion, a rather serious one. And in fact, it, it was his death that followed shortly. Let's uh, recap that just a little bit. Von Gammon, uh, the Gammon family, very well known here. They grew up right down on 3rd Avenue. The home is still there. The boys all played in the street. And he went off to the University of Georgia and said, oh, we'll do this football thing. Well, football thing back then was not like football thing now. And what happened? Well, he was uh, hit. Uh, we're not exactly sure what exact what happened, what the play was, or we know that he was um, laid unconscious on the field. Um, he was taken to the hospital um, and, and died um, there. Unfortunately, we don't have an exact cause of death, 
We know that it was a head injury. We're not exactly sure what happened. There was not an autopsy done on him. Um, but it caused a great um, uproar um, and a, uh, the, for a while um, uh, the state legislator, the legislature wanted to ban football in Georgia because of this. Um, and his mother actually stepped in and said, I don't think you should, this would not be what my son wanted to do. Um, fortunately, um, football in Georgia was not banned and it's still being played uh, today. Um, we don't know exactly if this was a concussion that killed him, whether it was a skull fracture, whether it was a, a bleed into the brain uh, that killed him. It's certainly, uh, we can point back in saying that head injuries are extremely serious uh, and they should not be taken lightly. No longer do we want people to just shake off a head injury. No longer do we want coaches to tell them to just rub some dirt on it and get back in there. We don't want parents to think that, oh, well, I played with concussions, I got my bell rung, my kid can do it. We just want it to be taken seriously. And there are some serious consequences that can occur. Fortunately, and I'm very glad in this, most kids do absolutely fine. Many kids probably do end up having concussions and end up playing and having no long-term problems but we're trying to do the best we can now to educate people what the signs, the symptoms of concussions are, and then to be aware of that and get them to see a doctor who can know how to help them. Well, that's the great historical stories of our town, and it's embedded in concrete on Broad Street right there at Jefferson's Restaurant. We've put a couple of plaques in the ground that tells about Von Gammon and his injury, and it tells about his mother, Rosalind, and what a wonderful lady she was. And she said to the legislature, do not do this. My son would want us to have football in Georgia. Very tragically, about three years later, her other son was killed in an accident at a baseball game in Cartersville. Mm -hmm. Terrible tragedy in that wonderful family. Mm -hmm. But thank you for bringing all this story to us. Uh, sports medicine, very important. We got a lot of it here and we do it right. It's a good place to live. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you so much.